Well, this was the question which was asked in the Indian Economic Services exam in 2014. Okay. So, and this question says that, tell me whether the following statement is true or false. If the consumer's utility function is u equals to x1 to the power 1 by 3, x2 to the power 1 by 3, she faces prices p1 and p2, and her income is i, then her indirect utility function is v equals to iq upon 3p1 p2. Well, so you have the direct utility function, direct utility function, which is given to you as u equals to x1 to the power 1 by 3 and x2 to the power 1 by 3 that is given to you and your budget constraint is see um, i might use in place of i i might use m in place of x2 i might use y so just bear with me uh, this is very very mechanical for us so uh, so you have m equals to p1 x1 plus p2 x2 right so it is here it is x1 here it is x2 <laughs> i can't help it anyhow so first of all if when you want to move from a direct utility function to indirect utility function you guys have to find out something which is called marshallian demands right so you have to find out marshallian demands clear so you have del l by del x1 this is what we have shown here, del L by del X2 and del L by del lambda. So dividing first by second, you'll be getting this guy. So you have three equations with you, one, two, and three. So dividing first by second, you'll be getting X2 by X1 equals to P1 by P2. <clears throat> so X2 equals to P1 by P2, X1. You can substitute this X2 back into the third equation here. And you will be getting this guy. M, M minus P1 X1 minus P2 in place of X2 you guys can write P1 by P2 X1 equals to 0. So once you solve it you'll be getting X1 as M by 2 P1 and X2 as this thing P1 by P2 in place of X1 you can write M by 2 P1 this is M by 2 P2. So your Marshallian demands which are the function of income and prices is M by 2 P1 and M by 2 P2. Now what is it that you have to do is that you have to substitute this these x1 star and x2 star which you have got from Marshallian demands back into the direct utility function which is your x1 to the power 1 by 3 and x2 to the power 1 by 3. So you have got x1 as m by 2p1 and x2 as m by 2p2. So you have just calculated it and you will be getting m by 2p1 1 by 3 m by 2p2 1 by 3 and after some calculation you will be getting this expression. Okay, you'll be getting this expression, which is this, right. This in any way is not equal to your, uh, the, the expression which is given to you in the, in the question, which is, I guess, uh, V equals to M cube upon 3P1, P2, right. So, this thing in any way it is not equal to m cube upon 3p1 p2. So, uh, what I have done in the earlier, uh, in, in, in the later part is that instead of writing this as this, your v, I can take up the monotonic transformation. I have just uh, uh, taken the, uh, I have raised it to the power of 3. To both the sides and I've got m square upon 2 square p1 into p2 so it is still not equal to the the expression which is given to you in the question and hence what you can say that the the answer is false right then there's an another question which is given to you um, in the in the paper again this is the question which has been asked in 2014 Indian economic services exam it says define complements and substitutes right in the two commodity case can the commodities be complements right explain is your answer valid in case if you have gross substitutes and gross complements uh, well i guess this is a tricky question right so i have given one explanation to this one way of answering this question um, i guess that there must be a second way of also answering this question that is uh, 
because uh, see defining complements and substitutes is not difficult so what are substitutes you do you use two goods together and uh, those two goods uh, they satisfy a particular want and uh, well what do they do is that you can use one good in place of the other good like for example tea and coffee so in case of tea is not available you can have coffee in case of coffee is not available you can have tea similarly complements uh, these are the, these are the goods which go together right that is for example pen and ink for example coffee and cream so these are the things which have to be satisfied together okay for your knowledge i mean for the perfect substitutes the utility function is u equals to x1 plus x2 and for perfect complements the utility function is u equals to min of x1 x2 this is not required but i'm just telling you well gross substitutes and gross complements and then they have said in the two commodity case can the two commodities be complements yes they could be okay for example cream and cream and coffee all this well but in the other case what they have said is i'll tell you what <clears throat> they have asked gross substitutes and gross complements so two goods xi and xj are gross substitutes if del xi by del pj is greater than zero that in case in case of the price of good j will increase demand for good i will increase so for example in case of price of coffee will increase demand for coffee will fall but demand for tea will increase that is del xi by del pj is greater than zero what are gross complements two goods xi and xj are said to be gross complements if del xi by del pj is less than zero that is if demand for um, for example coffee will increase sorry if price of coffee will increase demand for cream will fall because cream and coffee are complements so demand for coffee will increase sorry what i'm saying price of coffee will increase demand for coffee will fall and hence demand for cream will fall that is del xi by del pj is less than zero well see one thing you have to be very very clear about it is that if you have found that two goods are gross substitutes that is if you are saying that good i and good j are gross substitutes that is if you say coffee is a substitute of tea then it should always be the case that tea is a substitute of coffee okay you can't say that yes coffee is a substitute of tea but tea is not a substitute of coffee it doesn't make any sense similarly if you are saying that if if uh, coffee is a complement of cream then whether you apply definition in whichever way you want then cream should also be the complement of coffee that's what you're trying to say well the problem with the gross definition is that gross takes into account the total effect that is both your substitution effect and income effect now income effect will give you the paradoxical results that is um, because you don't know i mean substitution effect always has has an unambiguous sign now the substitution effect will always be like it'll be it'll be always negative right but income effect can be positive can be negative okay so that is the reason you can have paradoxical result in case you apply the gross definition well if you apply the gross definition then it might be the case that in a two commodity world two goods are not complements okay that is there might be the case in a two commodity world two goods are not complements or two goods are not substitutes so i've given you one definition that is u equals to xy is log x plus y so i've just found out uh, uh, this is a quasilinear function and i have found out uh, the demand function for them so just writing out the lagrange del by del x del by del y and del by del lambda so dividing first by second you'll get x equals to p2 by p1 you can substitute this x back here into the third equation and you'll get y equals to m minus p2 by 2 now if you apply the definition here on the x if you apply the definition del x by del p2 if you apply this is greater than zero it means x and y are gross substitutes then the the point is that if you apply the definition on y that is del y by del p1 this should also come out to be greater than zero but this is not coming out to be greater than zero this is coming out to be equal to zero it is saying that x and y are independent okay so this is wrong right well two goods but having said that i've given you one way of answering this question there might be a second way also which is talking about this second 
ठीक सेकेंड लॉ ऑफ डिमांड हिक्स सेकेंड लॉ ऑफ डिमांड वेल देर इज अ क्वेश्चन इन द इंडियन एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव सर्विसेज इकोनॉमिक्स मेन्स पेपर इन ट्वेंटी फोर्टीन आई थिंक दर्ज अ फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन दैट आई गेस इज रिलेटेड टू दिस सो आई हैव जस्ट केप दिस क्वेश्चन लिटिल डिफरेंट इन अ डिफरेंट रिकॉर्डिंग सो यू कैन सी टू दैट एज वेल ओके सो मेनी ऑफ यू माइट नॉट बी फेमिलियर with the this kind of mathematics in case if you are not and if you are giving the indian economic services paper then you have to know this economics you have to know this much of mathematics because otherwise it will be very difficult for you right this is not a rocket science anybody could learn it you don't need a, a very high level of maths but a basic calculus partial derivatives you have to know there is no way out of this problem you have to know this clear Uh, as far as this question is concerned, which I have just discussed, there is an another version also, which I'll be discussing in the IAS solution. Okay, so you, some of you might say that this is wrong. I think it's all interpretative. I mean, how do you interpret the problem? Okay, thank you.